Hi, my name is Paul, and today I'm going to be discussing the concept of significant figures. Now, in order to get our discussion going, let me give you a little scenario. Let's say we have a particular block, and this block has certain dimensions. So I'm going to draw this block like so. I'm going to give my students an opportunity to measure the dimensions of that. And I'm not telling them specifically what type of measuring device they're going to use. And so the students give these values. They say it's 1.2 centimeters high, like so, 11.5 centimeters across there, and 10.65 centimeters there. Now, I have a question for you. Which of the three measurements is the most precise and which is the least precise? Now, I'm guessing that you're probably thinking probably this one. Let's explore that a little bit more. What we're not saying with each of these values is that they got exactly 1.2, exactly 11.5, and exactly 10.65. When in fact, whenever we do any measurements in physics or any of the sciences, we are always saying it's a certain value that we're confident with, but there is always a margin of error. As I tell my students, if I say, what's the length of this? I'm going to say it's, let's say 10 centimeters. But even if I get to a greater precision, like it was 10.77564, centimeters, and not say I've actually calculated that value, there is still a margin of error in that. So what do we mean by that? So let's say that we get our 1.2 value, and I'm just writing the centimeters down so that you know what I'm talking about. Now in this case, what they're saying is the student's pretty confident that it's definitely between 1.15 and 1.25. That is, they're if it's a little higher than that, they would have probably said 1.3. If they said a little lower than that, they would probably have said 1.1. But they're confident they're within plus or minus 0.05 of around 1.2. Now, what is that as a percentage? Well, we're going to get approximately plus or minus 4.7%. So in other words, they're saying 1.2 is the value they determine here, but there is an uncertainty of around 4.7%. Now let's say I also do the same thing for the other two values. So 11.5, in this case, what we're saying is between 11.45 and 11.55. Again, I have an uncertainty of 0.05, but percentage-wise, I'm going to get 0.43%. So here you can see automatically that this value, they're more confident. There's a smaller percentage of uncertainty. And then finally, we have 10.65. And again, the same process applies 10.645 to 10.655. And as a result, a uncertainty of plus or minus of 0.005. Again, the percentage in this case is 0.047%. So a much, much smaller level of uncertainty. So this is definitely my most precise value. This is my least precise value. So here comes the concept of significant figures. Significant figures tells you the level of precision a certain number has, and we look at the numbers to determine what its significance is. So what we say in our case is that this here has two significant figures. It's not many. This one has three significant figures, and this one here has four significant figures. And so the levels of significance in terms of the numbers tells us the level of precision that we have in the number. Now, what if I get one of the students quoting this number, let's say in this case, to meters, not centimeters. And so they're going to quote it as 0.012 meters. What is its level of significance? Well, it's actually still two. Because we have these two numbers, it's still the, exactly the same value, but these two numbers here are significant because they tell you what the values are, but this zero here is actually not significant. Why? Because it's actually just a placeholder. It just tells us this is the tenth column, this is the hundredth column, and this is the thousandth column. So we don't include these numbers that are what we call leading zeros into the determination of what our significant figures is. So now that we've established the basic groundworks, let's go through the rules for significant figures. The first thing is obvious. The numbers that are not zero are significant. What about the zeros that are what we call leading zeros? Well, they're not significant. What about if the zero is actually in between the numbers? So let's say instead of, let's say we, instead of 0 0.12, we had 0 0.12. 
102, for example. Well, that actually tells us more about the precision. So they are included. So zeros in middle are significant. And then what we have is our trailing zeros. The zeros that are after the non-zero numbers, well, they are only significant if it's after the decimal point. So, but not before. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to write a set of numbers down and I want you to work out what the number of significant digits are. They all relate to the number three. So let's go through it. Well, this clearly has only one significant digit. That's pretty clear. This one, well, there's the three, but then the decimal zero tells us, in this case, the level of precision. In other words, it's not three plus or minus 0.5, it's actually 3.0 plus or minus 0 0.05. It's a greater precision. So in this case, two significant figures. In this case, again, because we've got two non-zero numbers, they're significant, the zero becomes important. So that's three. In this case, it's not two numbers there, but remember, this is just a placeholder as with the decimal point. So this is only one significant digit. In this case, again, it's similar to this, but again, this trailing zero here, again, tells us the significance of its precision. So in this case, it's two. Now, what about the last one? Well, the last one here is actually only one significant digit. And so in this case, the number could be anywhere between 250 and 350. But what if you're actually wanting to say, hey, I actually am much more certain about this 300. I'm actually thinking it's three or 100 plus or minus the 0.5. Well, in that case, the best thing to do to really make that clear is to write it in scientific notation. So if I write it like this, three by 10 to the power of two, then that's one significant digit. But if I write it like 3.00 by 10 to the power of two, same number, so to speak, but this is a greater level of precision, so there is three significant figures. So generally speaking, if you're writing numbers like this, these are just placeholders, so they do not become significant. Clearly, if I put a one there, 301 becomes three significant figures. Now, one last point, and that is, what do you do when you calculate these values out? Remember, my students measured these particular values, and from this, determine the volume. Well, our volume, in this case, is simply 1.2, by 11.5 by 10.65. And the student records this number, 146.97 cubic centimeters. Can you see a problem here? The problem is this. When they're quoting a number like this, they're saying they are confident of this number anywhere from 149.97 and really plus or minus the 0 0.005 on either side of that. In other words, what they're saying is they are confident with five significant digits. But the problem is, is that if you look at the three measurements that they made, this one here or this one here has the least amount of precision. And if you're calculating anything out, the one factor that is the least precise is going to impact the precision or the accuracy of your final answer. So in other words, you don't quote the number of significant digits as you it's spit out by the calculator. What you do in this case is you look for the number that has the least number of significant digits. In this case, it's two. And so what you then do, you quote the number, in two significant digits. And so in our case, that becomes 150 cubic centimeters. Now, of course, you could add your error into that. I'll discuss that in another video, the concept of how you record errors, but that's the best way to record it. Or of course, if you go scientific notation, I get 1.5 by 10 to the power of two cubic centimeters. So that's how you quote it. Now, one last little thing, this rule of quoting the correct number of significant digits here is when you multiply or divide your variables here. If, for example, you were adding these, and let's say you just added those values there, then you quote the final answer in the number of decimal places. So this is one decimal place, this is one decimal place, this is two decimal places. And so if you were to add those up together, you quote your number to one decimal place. Well, I hope that has helped you understand a little bit about significant figures. My name is Paul from Physics High. Please like, share and subscribe. Please put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you. Take care. Bye for now.